Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Guild Wars 1 Let's Play. We are here in the Vizanu Square, the local quarter. So this is one of the missions and factions that is quite interesting as it's basically the same mission but there's two sides. There are two missions and factions that have two different sides uh, in which two parties of eight combine. Um, it's probably just going to give us heroes because I doubt they're henchmen, excuse me, because I doubt there's people actually on the other side right now. But it's kind of cool. Um, this is the local quarter and the other side would be the foreign quarter for characters from other professions or other campaigns, which I'm sure we will see in the next episode. But let's go on in. Let's read this. Once a home to the famous assassin Vizu, inhabitants of this neighborhood successfully petitioned for the successful uh, the Celestial Ministry in the year 1396 to rename it. And are the one who would help them bring down Shiru the Betrayer. So we heard that name for a second time when we saw him in a cutscene. Shiro the Betrayer, who uh, he killed the old emperor uh, very long ago and set off something called the Jade Wind, um, which turned the sea down here to solid Jane and the forests over here to stone. Um, and just created some of the coolest locales in all of gaming. Um, but Vizu was one of the individuals responsible for, in his defeat, we'll learn a little bit about some of the other people who helped in his uh, defeat later. So we're here with Master Togo, and we're we'll meeting up with Menlo from the first game. Um, he's going to be bringing heroes from the other campaigns to meet us. This is something that they, do, that they didn't do in Nightfall, but I actually think it's kind of cool that it gives you, like, you know, if you had a friend who had a Nightfall character, you could come in on the other side and help them. That'd be kind of cool. It's just like a cool story way to bring people together. Although, again, it's a little, it, it's always a little weird when it's like, your allies show up, like, you know, when, like, you know, halfway through the battle, when, like, you knew they were coming. Like, we could have literally just waited for them to come down here, but whatever. Thankfully, this Menlo must survive, Togo must survive. Thankfully, the heroes uh, are able to keep the other person alive. Um, that is actually a pretty big worry with this mission that I had originally, is that what if, like, the henchmen couldn't kill the mobs on the way down? Right? So, Togo dies. Uh, the mission would fail. So this is Vizu Square, named after the famous assassin. Um, pretty cool architecture. You see slightly a better place. It's a little slummy, but there's also, there are some nice buildings in the area. So we basically just have to defend this area from the uh, encroaching uh, afflicted. That's basically what this entire mission is, is just defending against the affliction as they come in. Quite interesting is that these afflicted seem to be a lower level um, compared to like the, uh, the Ampha and like the other stuff we've been fighting in the area. These are a lower level. I think it's in part to make it so in this first zone that the he henchmen would be able to finish uh, if there were no actual humans uh, on the team. Um, I think that's partially why the enemies in this first zone are a lower level. We'll check for the re in the rest of the mission, but I think it's, it's only in the first zone, and it's only so, like... Oh, let's not let Togo die. We almost already failed the mission because we ran away from Master Togo and let him die. Um, great decisions we do not make. We do have to be careful with killing these things, because whenever they die, they blow up. So, we have to be a little bit careful. Also, a cool part about this mission is there are, um, like, 
locals nearby, and whenever they die, they turn into more members of the afflicted, so if you want to prevent that, you kind of stop them from turning by saving them. Kill him. Thank you. One thing about factions that I always kind of noticed and that made me kind of like the campaign is that, like, I don't know if it just feels like the spells from factions, like the ones that they added, just do so much raw damage. Because it feels like the enemies in this campaign hit like a truck compared to the uh, the enemies in the first campaign. Yeah, here's uh, it looks like it's all henchmen. There's Menlo up there. Actually, do I have? No, I don't. Okay. I was seeing if I had one of the special guild emotes. I do not. Alright, here's Menlo with a crew of uh, heroes from... Prophecies, as well as some, uh, some new faces. Ah, Menlo! It is good of you to come. Not a moment too soon. Master Togo, I'm at your disposal. I will make the introductions later. For now, we have a fight on our hands. Come. Okay. Now it looks like the enemies are still that lower level. I wonder if it's just because they wanted to go easy on them in the first mission. That the enemies are lower level. But now we have we have a full party with us. We have two full parties of uh, henchmen and heroes. So even though we have a, uh, you know, the henchmen aren't the greatest, they still will be able to put in quite a bit of work. For us. We want to make sure we, we're killing these ritualists first as they are uh, healers. Come to think of it, this is actually a funny campaign to try to use uh, the spell in since it wants to be a play melee and uh, yeah, these guys blow up when they're in melee, so. That afflicted Mesmer is level 20. I wonder if they're slowly... Uh, yeah, it looks like these are higher levels. So it looks like they're slowly going up in level. Oof, that Elemis still is just chunks. 200 damage a spell. Quite the, uh, the damage. Thankfully, there's so many enemies that we actually do get our morale cleared fairly fast. This district has been overrun with the plague of the other. Let's hope the others have been spared. Let's. Well, uh, excuse me. While others have been spared, let's find out why. And certain this is no natural affliction. It corrupts not only the body, but also the soul. They've gone crazy run. I agree, the cause of the plague is something supernatural. I believe we'll find it in, these dis in this district. There's some Ampha members. You want to be... So what happens here is if these Ampha are able to kill off like the peasants and stuff, you see they turn into afflicted. So if I can, I want to stop them from killing... Uh, the peasants. Some cool architecture around here, little houses.
There's like a little waters tower or something. Yeah, it's a water tower. That's cool. There's like a pavilion over there. I think we go over there later in the mission. I apologize. I bumped my mic. Man. Oh. It's an afflicted warrior over there. Is that going to be a problem? No, I think I have both Togo and Menlo with me. Yeah, I do. All right. It looks to be kind of random whether the uh, the enemies will be the higher level ones or not. So here you have three different areas where they spawn from, and we're just trying to make sure that they uh. I don't spawn. Sadly, I don't think we'll be able to save many of the peasants. Oh, this one turned into a ritualist of death. Make sure we kill the ritualist with the healer. The monks, interestingly, are actually smiting monks, so you don't actually have to focus down the monks super quick. You don't want to. The elementalists hit pretty hard, so the elementalists are pretty decent focus as well. Ooh. You see, be a little bit careful with Master Togo and Menlo. Thankfully, because I'm using heroes, this isn't too big of an issue. Um, I actually almost killed Menlo there because I... Yeah. This is one of those things where it really helps to be a melee character because you can just take the brunt of the, the explosion damage and just get rezzed up by your team and stuff like that. <laughs> if you need to be. Whereas, the way we're doing it, like, the damage is kind of just getting spread out between a lot of us. from that guy. Quite a bit of damage. Especially considering we're still relatively low level, relatively low HP. Um, I could probably use to put some more HP on my gear. Maybe I'll do that in between. It's been 200 years since Shiro killed the Emperor. He was sworn to protect. Why would this curse take so long to manifest? It might not be a curse. There are tales of evil spirits causing physical corruption. If, Sp if Shiro's spirit has somehow returned, it could cause a plague. We should search for signs of him. Is there another line before that that I missed? Oh, we suffered an outbreak of the same disease back at Shinji Island. The corruption emanated from a temple that bore the mark of Shiro Tagachi. Yeah, so people are thinking that Shiro has come back. Shiro the Betrayer. That dude from that cutscene we actually saw at the end of the last episode. <laughs> I'm looking out for myself. I suggest you do the same. To be completely honest with you, I don't blame him. Oh, Master Togo's stuck down back here with the afflicted ritualist. Where are you going? Come back here, you. Okay. Ooh, we leveled up.
are afflicted. These are just like the small downtimes though between each uh, region. This dude's gonna turn. Make sure we take care of him. Alright. The more Ampha. At least the team is getting some levels out of this. I'm just making sure that everybody's lo all leveled up. It's a really cool little shop here with like this. Yeah, it's called an orrery. I could be wrong about that. I think like that gold like thing, I'm pretty sure it's called an orrery. I like these scroll racks here. Thankfully our mesmers are pretty good at uh dealing with ranged enemies. Now the afflicted are getting a higher level as we get farther down. Yeah, it looks like all of them are level 20 and some of them are like level 24 now. blown up a little bit. This might be another thing where maybe I need to consider some uh, protection spells. You know, something else I kind of ignored in the, the prophecies for a little bit and it kind of bit me in the butt. So I probably need to uh, grab somebody with some protection magic. I don't know if that means I'm going to move back to a dual monk healer setup. I don't know. I kind of like having bit <laughs> to be completely honest with you. But Maybe it'd be better to have. Oh, getting blasted. Get healers here. We're doing relatively good with uh, HP. Assassin boss, though, they might absolutely wreck him. Yeah. Oh, okay, I got There was a great evil here. I could feel it. I think you are right, Menlo. The very spirit of Tiro Shiro Tagachi has returned, but why here? I remember this bookstore master who held magic or religious texts from across the world. I thought our temple was defaced because it was a holy place, but it too was a center of learning. Shira must be looking for something. We must find him before he finds it. Okay, so now the spirit is looking for something. And the name of the emperor opened this gate. You find nothing but trouble this way with all the chaos the Amphar are running things down here. Down there, sorry, excuse me. 
Damn, five petty street criminals do not concern us. I do have some defenses, though. I do have stand your ground. Oh, maybe I could swap one of these uh, for the uh, never surrender. I think that would probably help, too. Oh, a whole bunch of afflicted and a shuriken assassin. What is that? I am no mere spirit, mortal. Like a god, I have breathed life into this body. Come feel the bite of my blades if you doubt me. So the shuriken are like the Shiratagachi, I adjure you, show yourself, foul spirit, I'll bind you and return you to the underworld. Master type of being a ritualist, of course, you can do stuff with spirits. Let's try to grab... Yep, all of them. Uh-oh. Oh, that's another thing. This team probably doesn't have enough reses on it. But here's the Shuriken. They're like Shiro's spirits. Constructs thing. This one is like blade arms. It's kind of cool. Alright. We, we got it! <laughs> Uh-oh. Spirity bastard. Oh, damn, he just straight up one-shot us. <laughs> Who's that? What? Wait, I'm, I'm supposed to be dead, too. Why am I still alive? <laughs> we cannot stand by while Shiro continues to meddle. Envoy, like our staff. The delicate equilibrium between worlds tips further out of balance. Whatever his plan is, it must be stopped. We <laughs> hey, she rezzed us. We are the envoys to the next world. The shepherd who guides the newly departed to eternal paradise within the mists. Y'all getting this lore? Well, we were going to do that anyway, so. Seek out soon the Oracle of the Mists. He will show you how to become Wei no Su, closer to the stars. Hey, you like my staff? Ah, Wei no Su, the Celestial Test. Menlo and I know it well. I do not understand. Why do you wish us to pass this test? Spirits in this realm can hide themselves from a view of mortals. Until you have become closer to the stars, you will not be able to see Shiro, let alone fight him. Dun dun dun! I see. 
N no, that's the point. You don't see. <laughs> Sorry, that was a bad joke. Well, he got us, and then he didn't get us, so <laughs> I guess now we gotta go become Wayno Su, close to the stars, so we can see Shiro and actually fight Shiro. But, that's going to be the end of today's episode. I want to thank you for coming out, and I hope you have a great day. I will see you in the next one.